If you want to boost your productivity or you want to automate the boring stuff or you simply want to automate the things that you do repeatedly, then it's time to learn Siri shortcuts. Let's talk tech. How's it going? Will here from Will Talk Tech. Now, today we're looking at Siri shortcuts or shortcuts app, whichever one you prefer. Now, here's the thing to understand. The shortcuts app comes on iPhone, iPad, and Mac. And the app itself is the difference. The only difference between these three is one might have an action that the other one don't have. Now, the action that jump out at me right away is split screen. Like you have split screen on the iPad and on the Mac version, but there's no split screen on the iPhone. But everything else is the exact same. We're going to be using an iPad today. So if you're using your iPhone shortcuts app, no worries. It's the same thing. I'm going to use an iPad screen just because I want you to have a bigger screen so you can see exactly what I'm doing and where I'm pressing. Let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is we're going to go over here to the app shortcut, well, app store, and we're going to do a search for shortcuts. And we're doing this just in case you uninstalled it off your phone or device. And it's shortcuts by Apple. That's what we're looking for. And this is what we want right here. This is the app. Now you can see I already have it installed because I can open it. It's 100% free. Apple does pretty good at keeping us updated. And I'm telling you, this is going to be awesome. All right. So right now, what we want to do after you've installed it if it's not already installed is you want to open it up now you're not going to have all of these shortcuts don't worry about it just a quick rundown or overview of the shortcuts app is right now what you're looking at on this hand on this side which is the right hand side these are all my different shortcuts over here on the left hand side is our menu bar these are just folders that i've created so you can see my used shortcuts my most used shortcuts you can see my mac shortcuts i'm starting to add those in and then you can see other ones right here now you also have a few more up here which is automation and gallery but we'll talk more about that later you can see right here where it says shortcuts this is where it's broken down so you have all shortcuts you have my shortcuts you have your share sheet and then you have your apple watch these are ones that you can run from your apple watch as well your share sheet is ones that you can run from anywhere inside of safari if you just click the share and it'll, you'll be able to share it to this so that's your share sheet anywhere you have a share icon this icon right here you can share it through the app now first things first the very first thing we want to do is we want to open up a new shortcut so right now this is what you're saying this is the basics of shortcuts up here you have your icon you can change it up you can change up your symbol so i know we're going to be creating a messaging app so i can add a message and i can change this to let's say yeah i kind of like purple let's leave it purple and then i can say rename and i can call this Mm, we can call it Miha since that's what I call my daughter. So I'm going to say message and I got her name is Miha. And then up here, this is just asking us for like as far as the share sheet go. But honestly, we don't need this. So across here, you have your undo, your redo. This is your share. It's graded out because there's no actions here yet. And this is their play button. This allows you to play whatever, you know, you could test that action out, which you'll see in a minute how that works. Over here, you have your apps and then categories. Over here, you have all actions. You can click on that. This shows you all the the system Y actions, which is pretty, pretty cool. You're going to want to get familiar with this right here. All right. Back here, you have your scripting. Now, if you're going to study anything, start with scripting. Scripting gives you a lot of power, a lot of functionality inside of apps. You might find that it don't have it, but using scripting, you can get around that app not having an action or something like that. So you want to keep that in mind. Okay. As you scroll down, you can see that you have a ton of other things. You have like apps, next action suggestion and things like that, which is pretty cool. Over here, you have categories. These are your apps that you can look and see. We're going talk more about this later on then over here for this i this is where you see it says show and share sheet i can turn that off this goes away because i don't need to share that in the share sheet then you can see right here show on apple watch if i wanted to i can turn that on you can see pin and menu bar receive what's on the screen use a quick action you have all that cool stuff you have privacy allow running when locked and then you have setup all right so this is the basics of shortcuts now once you understand this simple thing what you want to understand is every shortcut really comes with two actions meaning you're doing you're collecting some type of data whether you're physically inputting that data using your keyboard 
you're copying and pasting it from your clipboard, you're pulling it from the share sheet, or you're doing something. You're doing something to pull data into Shortcuts app. And next, what you're doing is an action, meaning what is it that you want Shortcuts to do with the data that you just gave it? Now, the easiest way to do this is by showing you a simple shortcut that we can build out together. We're gonna build out a messaging app that quick messages my daughter, and we're just gonna figure out something to say as we do it, okay? So really quickly, I can say send message, which is right here. Now, if I if this wasn't right here, we could come over here to messages app, and right here, we can come down to send message. Now, right here is really simple. I could say ask for input, and then over here, I could say, I could say Miha. All right, then I say done. Now that's done. If I push play on this, it's asking me for input, meaning because every single time I don't want it to say the same thing, I want it to say something different. So because that's what I wanted to say, I'm gonna ask it to ask for input each time. Ask for input each time just simply means there's no default text. I have to put something there each time. So I'm gonna say, all right, so I put, I'm cutting the video. I will FaceTime you on a loop. I say done. And now you can see it pops up with her and all I have to do is hit send. And now you can see that that's, that's honestly how simple it is to get started. Now, the cool thing about this is if this is something I know I want to keep, I can come over here and instead of adding it to a share sheet, what I can do is I can say, okay, me high message. Now let's close out of here. And if I wanted to, I could say, Miha message and now this window pops up and it's not going to work. I have to disconnect from my keyboard, which is what I just did. And now you can see the screen popped up with the keyboard and now I could type on it. I'm not sure when Apple going to fix that, but basically if it's connected to the magic keyboard, for whatever reason it glitches and it'll type behind it versus what's in that box. Now, I should say this is running a beta, so if you don't have that problem and I do, it's probably because I'm on a beta and you're not. Now, I could just say, uh, I'm gonna say texting you while cutting a video. Then I'm gonna say done. And now it's gonna go out, pop up again. And now you can see if I hit send again, it goes out and she get that text message. Now, the cool thing about this is, this is a simple, really, really simple to understand example of the power of this. That means, I don't have to go to my app. I don't have to open up messages. I don't have to scroll or look for a name. I can literally just type in Miha and click on it. And there's a shortcut to pop up and I can send her a text. That right there from a productivity standpoint is amazing. All right. That's just a simple thing you can do with it. All right. Let's head back over to the app and we're going to go right here. And now since you see how easy it is to do that, what I want to do is I want to show you the gallery because maybe you're not really ready to dive into creating your own shortcuts, which later on in the video, I'm going to show you a super duper easy way to get started with creating your own shortcuts based around what you're currently already doing. So you're going to want to watch that. But for right now, let's dig into how to simply find shortcuts that's already been created that relate to you. All right. So now we're in a gallery and in the gallery, you'll see where you have get stuff done. You have quick shortcuts. Get stuff done is probably capturing something like, for example, start a Pomodoro, take, start a Pomodoro timer. I got to learn how to talk because someone got on my case about not pronouncing words correctly in the in the chat below. So got to make sure I'm on that. Then we got turn text into audio, batch ad reminders. We have how many days until. So this is a cool one right here. Let's just install that. And right now is asking me how many days until, let's say, all right, let's say Christmas, December 25th, 2023. We're going to say next. What's the name? We're going to say Christmas. We're going to add shortcut. Now, if I come back over to all shortcuts, you can see right here, if I click and run this, it should tell me how many days until Christmas. So you can see Christmas is in three months, nine days, 21 hours and 37 minutes. That is how cool that shortcut is. Now, the cool thing about this is I can come up in this shortcut and I can edit this from Christmas and I can change it from December to something else. But here's the cool thing about it. Look how easy it was to make this. All they're doing is asking for a specific date and then they get in time between December 25th and current date and they're doing date and total time. 
and then they doing an the output of show text is in and then time between dates. This is a really, really simple thing to do, but I don't want to get you confused because again, this is really simple. So another one we can do inside the gallery is we can look through here and see what we need. So we can see essentials. So we can click on select all and it gives you a little blurb about what is it about and things like that or what's a shortcut a quick introduction to what's possible with shortcuts now this probably would be one you would want to install and get started with and go from there and you can see right here it says a quick let's see we can add the shortcut by clicking on add shortcut so i see i already got one so i'm going to say cancel or if i wanted to make sure i had the correct update one i could say add shortcut and then i could say replace or I have the option to keep both. So I can come back over here. I can click on this and basically all it looks like this is doing is, let's see, every shortcut is made of actions. Give one a try, create a note, play a surprise song from library or turn on darkness. Uh, I don't really wanna do any of these cause all of them gonna affect it. But if I had to pick one, I guess I would say turn on dark mode since that seems to be the easiest one. Then we can click on find more shortcuts. So it's actually another thing. So this is a shortcut that runs another shortcut after you execute the first shortcut. So that's pretty cool, All right. So now what I wanna do is turn off dark mode and we can step into here and we can take a look at what they're doing and how sophisticated is this shortcut. Now, I mean, honestly, it looks a little complicated or complex, but honestly, it's really not that complex at all. And you can see right here, these are comments. So they're telling us which each section is doing to make it really easy for us to understand this so i this this is trust me this is not difficult at all in fact i've done some similar in another video that i created i'll link it up at the end of this video so you can see how simple it is to do okay so now what i want to do is i want you to get in the habit of creating one step shortcuts one to two step shortcuts is where it's at i mean honestly some of your biggest challenges can be solved with a one step or two step shortcut yeah we gonna get more complex as this playlist goes on but starting out let's keep it simple all right so one thing i know i want to do and for this example we're going to call this let's call this uh we can say remind me I'm just gonna say remind me if my keyboard will cooperate. And over here, I'm gonna look for a reminders app, which is right here. I'm gonna click through to it. And I'm just gonna simply use add new reminder. All right, so this is asking me, what do I wanna add? Now, down here, you have things that you can use. You can grab something from the shortcut input, which we don't have that active, device details, current date from clipboard, or X each time. We're gonna say X each time. This right here is going to be something that let's say you're you remember you need to do something or you have to make sure you take care of something then we're going to add it to reminders we're going to drop it inside of our inbox and we want to we could add an alert but we're going to do no alert okay we're going to keep it real simple now we're going to test it out by saying play and i'm going to say create shortcut video all right i'm going to say done and now we can come back over here to reminders and we should have that inside of our so if we go to our inbox we can see create shortcut reminder right there now one other thing we can do if we wanted to it's completely optional i'm going to click right here and you see down here up under note we can say add an x each time for notes as well and watch what's going to happen i'm going to click play again and i'm going to say get milk I'm gonna say done. And now you see this is the part for the note. So I'm gonna say, I want to grab the blue top. I'm gonna say done. Now what's gonna happen is you can see it created get milk and then my notes, I have a note on it. And if we come back over here, I'm gonna just close out that one, grab this. Now you can see it says get milk. And now I prompted myself with what I needed to remember, which is I need to grab the blue top instead of the red top. This right here, I'm telling you, like it obviously I'm a shortcut fanboy, but at the end of the day, if you're a productivity nerd or you're a content creator or you just have a job where you do a lot of the same repetitive stuff. I'm telling you, you need to start playing with shortcuts because if you want to duplicate a file and you modify it how you see fit, you wanted to input some fields for you, I'm telling you what, this is a very powerful app. And this is what we did with just one simple action. 
So you can do a lot with actions. You can do a lot of one to two step shortcuts and I'm telling you, it'll make your life that much easier. All right, so we're gonna close out of here. So I'm gonna just close that out. I'm gonna come back over here and I, I guess I can leave this here. I'm probably not gonna use it because I got everything. I got something else I use for this, which is OmniFocus, but I use Reminders because it comes standard and it's, it's an app where you can follow along with me, all right? All right, so I want to leave you with this bonus, and that is this. The easiest, I mean, easiest way to create shortcuts or to get started with creating your own shortcuts is look at problems that you deal with on a daily basis that you want to solve. Now, an easy way to do that, let's say you, in my case, I, I'm always writing stuff down and losing it. Well, I just created a reminder where I can actually capture that on my phone. And the cool thing about it is I create this shortcut on my iPad, but it's on my iPad mini and it's on my phone. So it's on all my devices, including on the device that I created it on. So it's like, you can't lose when it comes to creating shortcuts, all right? And it's gonna actually show up on my Mac too. And it's gonna work on my Mac as long as I have reminders on my Mac. So how cool is that, all right? But I wanna show you one more thing you can do. Just plan around. You want to, because I know when I first got started, my biggest challenge was, why can I do a shortcut about? Like, I don't know. So what I decided to do was I took a pause and I looked at the apps I use the most. And I started looking at, is it an action inside that app that'll allow me to do whatever I do the most inside that app faster. So the way this works is we just come over here, we're going to create another shortcut and we're going to come over here to apps. Now I know I use OmniFocus a ton. So if I click on OmniFocus, these are all the apps actions that I can do inside of OmniFocus from add an item, add task paper, find items, find projects, find tags, get database, object results from input. Then you have plugin, scripts, show in OmniFocus, today forecast, and inbox. Now, today forecast is something that I use a lot. Now, I could turn that off because I don't want it to, you know, show when run every single time. I could choose well, show when to run. We're going to turn that off and we're going to click play. Okay, so I guess this one right here is, so I guess this glitching because this OmniFocus is a beta version of OmniFocus and I'm on a beta of iOS 17. So I guess that's why that's doing that. But normally you can come up in here and you can look at anything. Like for example, I use DevonThink a lot. So I can look at set dev and think focus filters. I can come up in here and I can look at what I want to create. So I can see when I click on this eye, it tells me what I'm creating, what I can do with it. I can look at get content of items from file. Like it's so much cool stuff you can do with it. And it starts with just learning more about how you can use shortcuts with the apps that you're currently using. And that is, was a game changer for me. When I started looking at the apps that I already use, and I started going over the shortcuts, seeing what actions I can do with those apps, that was a tongue twister. When I started going over to shortcuts and looking at what I can do with those apps inside of shortcuts, it changed everything for me. So. I highly, highly recommend you start playing around with shortcuts because I'm telling you shortcuts is only getting better. And that's the complete overview. Now, if you want to see me create a more advanced shortcut, as I alluded to earlier, you can just simply click the video that just popped up on the screen. If I'm not mistaken, it should be right here. And this video right here is the one that YouTube think you'll like the best. Till next time. Later.